Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video. She's sitting this one out. So we're gonna talk about something boring. We're gonna talk about BuzzFeed because BuzzFeed is boring. BuzzFeed is hurting. We did a video the other day talking about the situation BuzzFeed finds itself in, that their stock is bottoming out, that they've been laying people off and that they had almost all of their money in Silicon Valley Bank and SVB. Uh, whoopsie doopsie, whoopsie doopsie. Now it's coming out that BuzzFeed is telling their reporters they need to churn out more stories to make up the deficit in ad revenue. We're gonna talk about this because this is what is actually going to kill off a lot of these digital media sites. It's gonna be a one-two punch. The ad rates are dropping tremendously. Like I can tell you as a guy who owns multiple websites that the ad rates are absolutely effing terrible right now. I mean, we're talking a fifth of what they were you know, two years ago. I mean, it's it's really bad. The worst I have ever seen. Uh, and I've been running websites since like 2007, 2008. Worse ad rates now than what we saw in 2008, 2009. Okay, so these websites aren't bringing the ad revenue in and they can't dip into venture capital anymore because the venture capital's all dried up. And uh, we're gonna see this domino effect with all these, these uh, banks collapsing because they've been stupid in lending out their money and uh, they haven't really been paying attention to uh, interest rates. And it's, it's a complicated situation. I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't even fully understand what led to the SVB collapse because I'm just sitting here like, how, how did nobody see this coming? How did, how, how did nobody see this coming? But the point of it being, um, from where I'm sitting, is that the venture capital is running out, which I've, I've predicted for two, three years now. I'm like, this is not sustainable. I know approximately what some of these websites are probably bringing in, and I see what they're spending in salaries and, and rents and and uh, you know events, and I'm like, this is not sustainable. And sure enough, it isn't. So now BuzzFeed, they're shaking down their writers uh, to write more. I think we're going to see a lot of this, though. I mean, um, gaming journals are getting laid off. Because what they're going to do is they're going to keep the journalists, these different websites are going to keep journalists that are the most important to them. So general news, politics, you know, uh, foreign correspondence, those people are going to come first. The very end of the uh, totem pole, the very bottom of the totem pole would be gaming journalists, pop culture journalists, comic book writers, entertainment writers, whatever. They're not as important as the uh, the other writers, right? So they're going to get laid off first. And we've seen a lot of these websites collapse. And this is why so many of these gaming websites especially have been sold for next to nothing lately is because they know the future is bleak. And we've got, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook saying, hey, it's going to be years, years of this, uh, years of, of declining ad revenue. So let's talk about BuzzFeed shaking their their reporters down to write more before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. Uh, almost 300,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, again, Geeky is is uh, not in this video, so woohoo. I'm going to do a woohoo. Uh, check out clownfishtv.com. That's our website. And actually, I don't have ads on it currently. And I'll tell you why. Because they were obtrusive and they didn't pay much. So... We're actually going to come up with a system. I think we might actually do some sort of subscription system or something uh, to make sure that we can pay our freelancers and continue to pay our freelancers and hire more people. Um, but uh, depending on ad uh, revenue, it's, it's just not working anymore, guys. It's over for now. It's over. It, it just doesn't work. So this is coming from the Wall Street Journal. BuzzFeed encourages reporters to write more stories in an attempt to turn a profit. Again, this is after their stock collapsed, uh, after they announced that they lost like a hundred and some million dollars last quarter, and they said that Q1 is gonna be catastrophic, and after they announced that uh, almost all their money, almost all of their money was in SVB, and all of their money was only $56 million, and this is a company that was supposed to be uh, valued at like two to four billion at one point. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what we can control is how many stories we publish each day. So they're going to have their writers churn out more. BuzzFeed is encouraging its newsroom to produce more articles, more clickbait in an effort to boost traffic as its news division continues to lose money and the digital publisher braces for continuing declines in revenue. 
BuzzFeed News Editor-in-Chief, Carolina uh, Waklawiak. Waklawiak? God, why can't people just all be named Smith? It's so much easier for me. Uh, told staff at a recent meeting that increasing the news division's volume and traffic was part of an effort to help the newsroom meet a goal of becoming profitable this year. Maybe this year we can do it. Like, man, did you pick the wrong year? There's so many things outside of our control. The advertising market, the economy, a recession. There is a recession. Are we allowed to, are we allowed to say that now? Um, what we can control is how many stories we publish each day. Um, so the staff meeting also noted that the effort to increase volume came while the newsroom was much smaller than it used to be. So fewer writers cranking out more crap. Oh, by the way, yeah, BuzzFeed, they let it slip uh, a couple of weeks ago that they were going to use AI to write more stories and they were going to work with Facebook to do AI stories. BuzzFeed has reduced the size of its roughly 100 person newsroom by 40 percent. Now the people that are left have to write more while shifting its focus away from long form investigations and coverage areas such as politics and financial news and toward Internet culture, celebrity news and the biggest news of the day. Basically, whatever people are actually searching for. The company said it continues to do long form journalism, saying a piece last week of about 6000 words uh, concerning Andrew Tate's something that somebody would be searching for. A former kickboxer and internet personality who was arrested in Romania last year on suspicion of human trafficking. Mr. Tate has denied the allegations. Uh, Ms. Waklawiak said in a statement that BuzzFeed News is developing a strategy to get profitability, to get to profitability that includes publishing more stories, focusing on topics that resonate with the audience, and pursuing long-form investigations that can serve as the basis for documentary projects. So we're gonna we're basically gonna like workshop documentaries, and then we're gonna make get somebody to give us money to make those documentaries. BuzzFeed said it published 404 articles in February, a 24% increase from the year earlier period. Yes, and I guarantee you their revenue is a fraction of what it was last year. Digital publishers are struggling. Where's their Gamergate movie? Oh, oh yeah. Where is the Gamergate movie? Documentaries, but where's the Gamergate? Yeah, Geeky had to remind me of that I forgot that existed. I forgot that existed. Yeah, they were going to do a Gamergate movie. I don't think that's going to happen now. Digital publishers are struggling to boost revenue as advertisers pull back on spending. BuzzFeed, which on Monday said lost 105.4 million in the fourth quarter on revenue of 134.6 million, generates revenue beyond traditional advertising. Yes, they sell vibrators and uh, tasty products, I guess. BuzzFeed's other drivers include e the e-commerce business. Yes, dildos, which gets revenue from recommending and selling products online. It's called Amazon Affiliate Link. Google it. An Amazon Affiliate Link. That's where a lot of their revenue comes from. Again, any, any blogger could do that. They can post an Amazon affiliate link in articles and get revenue from that. And a category labeled as content revenue, which the company describes as payments it gets from clients for products such as branding quizzes and sponsored content. So you can buy the news on BuzzFeed, guys. You can buy the news. BuzzFeed says it's going to rely on chat GPT uh, to enhance quizzes and personalize some content. No, they're going to use it to replace their journalists, guys. Because why, why cut 40% of your newsroom when you can cut 80% and AI doesn't get tired and it doesn't complain and it doesn't want to unionize. So you can, you can just work it, work it, work it. And it doesn't matter as long as it, it feeds the, uh, the algorithm. BuzzFeed stock lost a quarter of its value on Tuesday, closing below a dollar after the company on Monday afternoon said it expected to generate between 61 and 67 million in revenue in the first quarter compared with the 91 million, uh, last year. The digital publisher on Monday said the majority of its cash had been held at Silicon Valley Bank, which collapsed on Friday. Things are looking great. Things are looking great for BuzzFeed. Everything's coming up BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed said it ended 2022 with cash and cash equivalents. And this is not just cash. Cash equivalents of approximately $56 million. That's not a lot of money for a company that's supposedly the size of BuzzFeed, that's supposedly worth billions of dollars. That's not a lot of money. Um, yeah, BuzzFeed shares have shed 90% of their value since the company went public in 2021. They're done. Like BuzzFeed is just, they're done. They're done. BuzzFeed's done guys. Um, and here's the thing too. This is, this is uh last month. Remember ad spends are down. 
Uh, this coming from Ad Week that Google was re- reporting decreased ad revenue amid looming advertiser pullback. And that's the thing. People are pulling back on their advertising. Um, They are for sure. And banner ads, especially Uh, the reason that, and I think, you know, leading up to this, the reason that so many gaming journals and traditional media journalists were dunking on YouTubers, you know, so much was because it was uh, a threat. Uh, Resources were being, allocated from banner ad revenue on their websites to sponsorships for YouTubers. And and they were, a lot of these companies were actually uh, throwing money at YouTubers and other influencers, um, podcasters, you know, basically everything but your traditional blogger. And now even traditional bloggers are going to potentially be replaced at some of these publishers by AI. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a messed up situation. It really is. But, uh, you know, again, none of this was ever sustainable. It was never sustainable. Uh, a moron, I'm not saying I'm a moron. Some days I'm not very smart, but a moron could look at the situation and say they're spending way more money than they're bringing in. And, uh, this is not going to last and the bubble's bursting guys. It's all ending. Uh, a lot of these websites are going to get nuked. They're going to sell for next to nothing. And I do believe that gaming journalism and pop culture journalism is going to be the most affected. And we're going to see a massive recalibration. I think we're going to see more news that is fan based because there's not going to be a lot of money in it. So the people that are writing about these things actually care about these things. And we're going to start to see stories that are more in line with the general fandom's actual takes on things and their likes and their dislikes instead of all these artificially propped up news outlets uh, doing damage control and, uh, you know, feeding you spin from, you know, Disney and Paramount and all these other studios. Just my personal opinion. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.